Welcome to the Rugby Business Network podcast. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us uh, and have a listen from wherever you might be in the world. In this episode, we're going to be speaking about Laos, which is a landlocked country in the heart of the Indo-Chinese peninsula of mainland Southeast Asia. Some of you might have been there to the country or would have perhaps come close to it while visiting either Thailand or Vietnam. But how many of you would know that Laos has its own rugby union and while it is still a minor sport in the region, it is growing at a steady rate. To find out more about this union and its development, the Rugby Business Network is joined by Partnerships and Development Advisor at the Lao Rugby Federation, Megan Knight. Megan, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Thanks so much for having me. It's our pleasure. Well, Megan, the Lao Rugby Federation was founded in 2001. Could you highlight for us some of the interesting aspects of the federation, maybe some of the main competitions that take place, uh, and the regions within Laos where rugby is being played? Laos rugby focuses our work on four areas. Mm -hmm. We have Champaban Youth Rugby. Champaban means blossoming flower in Lao language, so this is talking about all of our work with kids, usually focusing on ages 6 to 16. Mm -hmm. And then we have domestic rugby, where we have four registered clubs, Within, there are about nine teams playing at the senior level, so that's for ages 17 and above. Mm -hmm. And we also have national teams, under 17s, under 20s, and senior men's and women's 7s and 15s national teams. And our fourth area of focus is institutional capacity building, so that's really on focusing on bringing coaches, referees, administrators, first aiders, up up to international standard rugby administrators. Mm -hmm. So those are the four areas that the Lao Rugby Federation focuses on, and we mostly focus our work on two provinces in Laos at the minute. It's Vientiane, which is the capital of Laos, and then also Zing Quang province, which is on the border with Vietnam. Mm. And across those two provinces, we have about 3,000 players registered in our work. Mm -hmm. Most of those are at the youth level in our Champapan program, and they're using the Child Fund Pass It Back Rugby and Life Skills curriculum. So we have about 70 coaches who are trained in the curriculum and who are delivering weekly sessions of tag rugby according to the curriculum. Wow, that's a, quite a setup that you have going there. Well, you've been there at the Federation yourself, Megan, since uh, 2010. Could you elaborate on what it is you do specifically as a partnerships and development advisor? We have about 20 people, 20 full-time staff members at the Federation, so we're really lucky to have a, a huge workforce that's mm. working hard to keep all of these players and teams going. A lot of my work is supporting with international relations. We hold seats on Asia Rugby's Gender Inclusion Committee, Medical Committee, Development Committee, and Training and Education Committee. So a lot of our work is, or a lot of my work is helping to connect the things that we're doing in Laos with the broader initiatives that Asia Rugby and World Rugby have in mm -hmm. the region. Mm -hmm. And also sharing some of these best practices with our colleagues in Vietnam and the Philippines who are also using the Pass It Back curriculum. So you are covering quite a large part of uh, what needs to be done behind the scenes there at uh, the LRA. But before you joined the Federation, Megan, you did spend some time at USA Rugby. Being in the best possible position to comment on both rugby unions, what would you say are the vastly different uh, aspects of each? Or do you think there are more similarities than one would imagine? There are some significant differences, but in we, we've been able to learn a lot from some of the things that USA Rugby is doing and the work that they did to start Rookie Rugby, the tag rugby program that they're using in, in the U.S., mm -hmm. helped a lot with when we were forming the Child Fund Passive Act tag rugby curriculum in Laos. And we've had some experts from USA come over to help support some of our Lao work. Just this last weekend, we had... Leah Berard, the USA Rugby and World Rugby referee who refereed in the Olympics, mm. was over to support our referees and give observations and support them in their development. So it was excellent to have her over here and to be able to keep the connection going between the U.S. and Laos. Mm. Well, it's fantastic to hear that there is that uh, collaboration that exists between the rugby unions. Now, having been at the Lao Rugby Federation for over seven years, how would you describe the growth of the sport in the country? Well, we have really grown a lot in the last, especially since we started to partner with Child Fund Australia. So okay. that was that partnership started in 2012. And we have Child Fund Laos is the country office for Child Fund Australia, who works in 53 countries around the world. Mm -hmm. So we've been working with Child Fund Laos since 2012, and that has really helped us to grow and develop the sport and also our structures, the Lao Rugby Series structures, to manage the sport. Mm -hmm. 
So we only had about 300 players in 2012. And then through the partnership, we've been able to now have 3,000 registered players. Mm -hmm. So in terms of numbers, that's really significant growth. Mm -hmm. And then also in terms of building capacity, we had only a handful, probably 10 coaches who were working with us during that time in 2012. And then through our through our work with our partners at Child Fund, we've been able to train up 70 coaches who are between the ages of 16 and 25. Mm. These young people have the skills, first aid, basic first aid, safeguarding, rugby coaching, rugby refereeing, team management, life skills coaching. They have a intensive two-week training every summer and a follow-up training every January mm-hmm. to help them really develop their skills and then be able to go back to their communities and their youth team and lead the ongoing rugby sessions during the week. So this institutional support has really enabled our, our team to be able to develop our capacities and support more players and more teams across the country. Earlier in 2017, mm-hmm. we were a part of Child Fund Pass It Back winning of the Beyond Sport Safeguarding Award. So Beyond Sport is a global sports recognition mm-hmm. where they, they were able to award Pass It Back their, uh, this annual award for their work to in safeguarding because they were helping Philippines, Laos, Vietnam, and some other unions in the region to develop safeguarding policies. And Laos was at, at the forefront of that. Mm-hmm. And now the lessons that Laos has learned in terms of developing a safeguarding policy and working with our coaches to really train them about safeguarding practices mm-hmm. has been shared with Asia Rugby as well. So it's an opportunity for other unions to learn from the work that's happening in Laos, which... Mm-hmm. Laos is a small country in the region, so it's exciting to see our staff developing in these ways and then being able to share with other Mm. countries as well. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. Now, Megan, you have touched on it earlier, the number of uh, people that are busy working there behind the scenes from administrators to, to coaches at the LRF. Could you share with us a story perhaps that highlights the type of progress and dedication that is being shown by your fellow colleagues? A lot of our work is in quite rural parts of Laos. So the first aid training, for example, that the coaches receive, it's the, some of the highest quality first aid that will be available in the village. Mm. So a lot of people in the community are going to our young coaches to ask for support with a motorbike accident or a farming accident or something like that. So that's been mm. an interesting development that we've seen from supporting them in this way that we didn't necessarily intend for. Mm. But we're very happy to see. There's several, I mean, a lot of our coaches have really amazing stories, but in Laos, especially in the rural communities, um, marriage at, at a young age is really quite normal. Mm-hmm. It's 16, 17, 18 years old is a common age of marriage, especially for girls in rural Laos. Mm-hmm. So we've seen in the past quite a lot. We had 30% in the first two years, 30% of our female coaches quit coaching because they got married. Mm-hmm. And that, that was, again, between the ages of 16 and 25, so quite young and having to quit their responsibilities within the community. Mm-hmm. But since we've been working, we've had two or three coaches who've now stayed involved in the program, even if they've gotten married. And so this has been, they've been really change makers in their community and helping other young girls to see that it's possible to still participate and be involved in the community activities even after Mm. they've gotten married. So this has been really exciting and just part of the leadership work that some of those Mm. great coaches are doing in their community. Wow, that's uh, inspiring. Well, speaking of women's rugby, it was introduced in the country about six years ago. How popular is rugby among the women in Laos, uh, considering, as you've mentioned, that they get married in their mid-teens? Uh, what sort of developments have you seen, though, during your years in the country in women's rugby in particular? Yeah, so in Laos, we're really, we have actually been really lucky and have quite a unique opportunity because when we started to do our youth activities in about 2000. 10, mm-hmm. 2009, there were not many people in Laos who knew about the sport of rugby. And so there wasn't really any perception about who can play, like really big people, only men or anything like that, where in a lot of other places in the world who see the All Blacks and all these other rugby personalities, they think that you can only play rugby if you're a big person or mm. a man or something like that. And so in Laos, because there were no perceptions, when we started to work in these communities and we had female and male coaches and trainers going into the community, then young girls and boys equally started to join and participate in the activity. And in Laos, soccer is quite a big sport as it is everywhere in the world, mm-hmm. but it's still quite male dominated with a lot of young boys starting to play when they're one, two years old as soon as they can walk. And this creates an imbalance because girls are, are already excluded from it from a young age. Mm. But with rugby and, and boys and girls starting at the same age and having the same level of knowledge 
it really was an opportunity for both male and female players to join the sport and learn as coaches and players at a similar rate. So we've been able to see because of that kind of approach that we have 56% of our players and coaches are female, mm-hmm. which is actually quite unique. And I think the highest level of female, part- the highest percentage of female participation of any rugby union in the world. That's so interesting how women's rugby has grown in Laos in such a short space of time. Now, Megan, you've mentioned it quite a few times uh, already in the podcast, and that is Child Fund Pass It Back. Please, could you just elaborate a little bit more as to what this uh, is all about? We joined with Child Fund Laos in 2012 Mm -hmm. to do a small pilot project about using rugby as an opportunity to deliver life life skills messaging. Mm -hmm. During that time, there were four sports that started with the project with Child Fund Laos. It was sepatakra, volleyball, football, and rugby, Mm. and they saw from Child Fund saw from partnering with us that there was such a high rate of female participation in rugby mm-hmm. and the other two sports didn't have the same engagement. Yeah. So we worked more with them and we also have some partners who joined Women Win, which is an NGO based out of the Netherlands who mm-hmm. d- does a lot of work on using sport as a tool to deliver messaging, especially for girls and women. Mm-hmm. And also Child Fund Australia, of course, based in Australia and Asia Rugby and World Rugby mm-hmm. all signed on as full partners and developed a full curriculum. Now the curriculum is four modules long. So the first one is focusing on gender. Mm -hmm. The second one is focusing on planning for the future and financial literacy. The third module is focusing on being healthy and sexual and reproductive health and rights. Mm -hmm. And the last one is focusing on preventing violence in the community. So these are quite big life skills issues and rugby is the vehicle that is used to deliver this messaging. So it works by About three or four rugby activities are delivered at each session, followed by one on-the-field game that has a life skills focus, Mm -hmm. and then a short discussion that the coaches conduct with the players about that life skills topic. Mm -hmm. So some of the topics within those different modules include financial literacy, saving money, communication skills, problem solving, different small topics that lead to the bigger outcomes around gender, planning for the future, setting goals, these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So there's an opportunity for players to play rugby and develop their tag rugby skills and then also to learn a concrete specific life skills message from the session. Well, if our listeners haven't heard of Child Fun Pass It Back uh, before, glad that they know all about it now. It sounds absolutely amazing. Now, Megan, on the Lao Rugby Federation's website, it states that that its mission is to provide opportunities for men and women, boys and girls, social and elite players, and those in urban and rural areas to participate in the sport of rugby union whilst ensuring that health benefits and personal development opportunities are realized to their fullest extent. Now, with that said, is rugby reliant on the community's input to help the sport grow, or is there some sort of backing that's coming from the government? We are one of 40 sports federations Mm -hmm. registered under the Ministry of Education and Sport. So we have quite a good working relationship with the government and they are very supportive of our efforts. Mm. As Laos is a least developed country, there is not a lot of funding available from the government. But in 2017, we did secure a limited amount of funding from them for the first time from Mm. the Lao government. So it was excellent to be able to have that support Mm. financially and also to have the ongoing support in all of the rest of the kind of connections and networking and support that they give us in day-to-day work without mm-hmm. without finances. Mm-hmm. That being said, we are really lucky to have our partners, Child Fund, and to be working with them with, with Age Rugby and World Rugby through the Pass It Back program because this has really been able to take us, take the Federation to the next level. We've been able to learn how to do new systems of in our finance. We've been working closely with Child Fund Laos. This has enabled us to be able to start doing annual external audits. Mm -hmm. We've been able to develop our safeguarding practices. So we've been able to do a lot of things institutionally to strengthen the Federation's Mm -hmm. work. That has also been really interesting for our colleagues at the Ministry of Education and Sport, who also see this as an opportunity for other sport federations Mm -hmm. to learn from our partners at Child Fund and to strengthen the capacities of of those administrators as well. Mm -hmm. So this is a really good opportunity for us. And of course, it helps us to access funding and more players through our work with Child Fund. Well, it's wonderful to hear that there is that backing coming from the government as well as uh, from your partners. Now, you've witnessed so much growth at the Rugby Union in Laos uh, over the years you've been there, Megan, but looking ahead now, say 
in the next five years, where do you realistically see the sport? Could the national teams there be able to move up a tier and play nations uh, such as Japan, Fiji, Tokyo, USA, Canada at a competitive level? Or is the focus more on social development? Laos sits in Division 3 of the Asia Rugby Championship. Mm -hmm. And we have seen some really exciting developments for the national team in 2017. We had the, the first under 17 national teams competing in 2017. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, actually nearly all of those players, both on the men's and the women's under 17 teams, mm -hmm. had come through the Pass It Back program. So they had been playing tag rugby for up to five years by that point. And then when they transitioned to contact, we saw excellent results. We had the Lao, the DAT Lao women's under 17 team won against Malaysia, the Philippines, and the UAE, which was the, the best results we've ever had for a national team. Mm -hmm. So we're really encouraged that having our players starting at such a young age and developing the skills as they've been able to do through our Champavana and Child and Pass Back work mm -hmm. has been leading to really good results at, at the top level. And we are really confident that as the young kids continue on through the program and keep going with rugby, mm -hmm. that we'll be able to have even better results against other top national teams in the region. Mm -hmm. That being said, we're still we're still only at Division Three in Asia Rugby, so I think it will take quite a few years to get to the stage of Japan or Hong Kong or anyone like that. Mm -hmm. But for for the results that we have seen so far, wins over Malaysia and the Philippines are are great wins for us. Mm -hmm. And the NOC and our ministries are very proud of those accomplishments. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and there is that progress uh, being made, and that's uh, a massive positive. Now, finally, Megan. The reality is that World Rugby only offers a limited amount of funding to unions across the world. The 100 World Legends Charity Project is offering its support to the LRF. But how can other businesses, individuals and members of the Rugby Business Network get involved with rugby in Laos to offer some much-needed support? And what areas need the most attention? Unfortunately, we're only associate members of World Rugby. Mm -hmm. And the thing that we're really missing in order to achieve the full membership criteria, the only thing we're missing is 10 full contact 15 senior men's teams. Mm -hmm. So in Laos, we're really... We're really limited to tag rugby because we just don't have the pitches or facilities to transition the kids that are playing in rural Laos mm. into proper contact just because they're playing on dirt, dirt pitches right outside of their school and it's, it's completely not safe for them to be playing contact there. Mm -hmm. So when we, do, when we are able to transition the young players, we have to take them to like the provincial capital or somewhere where there is a pitch where they can, where they can play. So we were really lucky to have the a couple of the 100 world legends in town who played in our big tournament every year mm -hmm. that we had in February and then also travel up to visit our work in Zingquan province. And we had a, a little clinic for some of the players and coaches to come together at the provincial capital stadium and we could do some contact development activities and some, some more skills work with them. So having people support in terms of coaching and refereeing and, and helping that transition is great. Mm. Also, the 100 World Legends that came, they all had sponsors who sponsored some of our teams to compete or to participate in the season. So we have three teams who are able to compete mm. in a year of pass it back rugby and life skills because of the sponsors, projects, and Carn Hill structures and BAC management. So mm. We're really excited that they were able to bring funding support with them because, as you said, we, we're, we're not able to access the World yeah. Rugby funding support just yet. And we're also really, we have a lot of good relationships with clubs in Hong Kong and clubs in the UK who are doing great things to fundraise for the Federation and send donations, mm -hmm. send donation items, as well as like shoes and kit because these are big things for, for our players to be able to get shoes and rugby kit through through their activities with us really helps them to be able to stay involved and participate more so mm. these kinds of sponsors and funders and donors are really what makes Slot Rugby able to do the work it's doing so we really appreciate all of that support and if our listeners would like to offer their support they simply need to go to the website which is www.laorugby.com that's spelt l-a-o rugby.com. Well, Megan, it's been interesting and educational to hear about the Lao Rugby Federation and the incredible work that you and your colleagues are doing to not only grow the sport in the country, but to also make a significant impact in the communities. Thank you for chatting with us at the Rugby Business Network. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. Everyone's welcome to come to visit Laos for any of our tournaments or if they want to get more involved, get in touch with us.